Kevin Durant, three teams in four years. Kyrie, three teams in four years. Harden, three teams in four years. Russell Westbrook, five teams in four years, although not all necessarily by choice. LeBron, AD, Kawhi, Paul George, Donovan Mitchell, on and on and on, whether by trade demand or team preference, the name of the game of the NBA is you win or you leave. But not for the poster boys of NBA loyalty, Bradley Beal and Damian Lillard. Since 2019, two playoff appearances for Lillard, one for Beal. Four total playoff games won combined. 140 win season between the two of them. A combined team record of 266 and 352. That's a 43% winning percentage. That's the winning percentage of an 11 or a 12 seed every year for four years and neither guy has left. And that just isn't supposed to happen. And both of them get celebrated for this loyalty. The two guys that have actually stuck it out with one franchise throughout their primes, despite very little evidence, especially recently, that any kind of team success is on the horizon. But there is way more to this. Because it isn't just that they aren't leaving, it's that they keep signing up for even more of this as they age out of their primes. Lillard signed a four-year extension in 2019 and then added a another two years in the 2022 offseason, giving him a contract that takes him through the 26-27 season. Beal did the reverse with a two-year extension in 2019 and then a four-year deal in 2020 that also takes him through the 26-27 season. And the reason I bring that up is because, of course, money plays a big part in this. Because of all the player movement, the NBA has put into place certain measures that make it easier for smaller market teams to retain their star players, most notably the fact that they can give them more money over a longer period of time, which both Beal and Lillard have rightfully taken advantage of. However, the idea of retaining stars like this is to, you know, actually win some games if you're going to pay them all this money. Since 2019, Damian Lillard has earned $143 million and the Trailblazers have won 137 games. Bio, on the other hand, $131 million for 129 wins. And let me be totally clear before someone gets mad in the comments. Yes, they have every right to get these contracts. They should absolutely be looking out for themselves individually when it comes to the money that they can earn in the very limited time frame in which they are NBA players. But if either of them actually finish out these deals that they're on with their current teams, I'd be shocked. Because we are already seeing a major shift in the conversations around both of them in terms of their interest in staying with their current teams. Both of them have been in trade rumors for years, and really the only reason their teams haven't moved on is because there hasn't been a specific trade demand from either of them. And if you're either the Trailblazers or the Wizards, it's a really difficult thing to do to make the decision to move on by yourself. In this era of player movement in the NBA, being the one team that decides to be pro active about moving on from the two stars in the league that are actually loyal to their teams is a really difficult decision and one that neither of them have decided to make, but that could all be changing. We've gotten comments from both Beal and Lillard about their disinterest in continuing to stay on their current teams if they decide to go through a bit of a rebuild, because at this point, both of them are kind of sick of losing all their games. And being loyal to a franchise and making a ton of money is cool and all, but if you can still make the same amount of money and get traded to a team that's actually winning games, that's obviously much better. But do you want to know the secret of all of this? These teams should be hoping that these guys demand a trade soon. That would be without a doubt 100% the correct move for both of these teams. Think about teams recently that have been proactive about trading away stars on their teams and getting quality value out of them before they get too old. One team that didn't have much of a choice was Oklahoma City trading away Russell Westbrook as well as Paul George. When the Clippers realized that they could get Kawhi if they traded for Paul George and then he requested a trade, Oklahoma City decided to be proactive, go ahead and get as much value out of him as they could. And then later on, they, of course, also traded away Russell Westbrook. And which team has the brightest future in the league right now as a result directly of both of those moves? That's the Oklahoma City Thunder. They weren't going anywhere. They weren't winning a title. They weren't going to compete. They were at best a second round playoff team, which is even above where either Portland or Washington find themselves. And now they've pivoted into, like I said, the brightest future in the league. There's another example of this, a guy that I mentioned earlier on in the video, Donovan Mitchell. Utah didn't have to trade him away. They could have just traded away Gobert and then rebuilt around Mitchell, but they decided, no, let's be proactive about this. Let's move this guy that has a ton of value right now before he becomes an impending free agent so we can trade him anywhere we want to. And that team ends up becoming Cleveland and Utah has a much brighter future and a much clearer path towards championship contention years from now than they ever had when they still had both Gobert and Mitchell on the roster. The only reason they haven't moved on and they they haven't put themselves in a better position for the future is because they haven't specifically demanded a trade, but they'd be so much better off if they did. This is a team building strategy that I would expect a lot of smaller market teams to explore moving forward. If we get a star like Beal, like Dame, that can't carry a team on their back to a finals appearance and we try it for a few years, can't build the correct team around them, at a certain point, you're just stuck. And a great way to get unstuck 
is to move these guys for the massive trade packages we've seen stars go for recently and go out and get yourself another star down the road, this time with a ton of other assets to build around them. Think about the Wizards with Beal and Wall and Otto Porter. They were fine, but they were always a piece away from championship contention, and they didn't have the other assets on the roster to truly elevate themselves to that. If they trade Beal now, they could be that level of team once again in a few years, but this time with plenty of assets to truly reach for a title. Portland, meanwhile, actually has young guys to build around, no offense to Porzingis or Kuzma, who the Wizards would probably be better off trading if they did move Beal. But Anthony Simon, Shaden Sharp, these are the kinds of high upside young guys that you want to have around for a rebuild. And think about how much more exciting this team would be if you added the returns of a Lillard trade package to the equation. And if you're Portland and you're Washington, you have to start thinking about these kinds of things, thinking about how you could reshape your roster with a Lillard or a Beal trade to set yourself up for success. It's great that these guys have been loyal. It's great that you've had at least a little bit of success for Portland. You made the conference finals for Washington. You had an okay run there with John Wall and Otto Porter and Bradley Beal, but that time has passed. And when you look at the assets on your roster, you don't have the ability to create a championship contender. You've both tried to just be playoff teams with semi win now moves and it hasn't worked. And a lot of times we use this phrase with star players and franchises where a franchise is on the clock. That's not what's happening here with either of them. These guys are signed long term, but what you are on the clock for is the end of their primes. If you want to get maximum value for either of these players, right now is the time to do it. They're never going to be better at basketball. They're never going to be a better asset than they are right now. And if you're a Washington fan or a Portland fan, it might be a hard thing to hear. These are guys that have been in your lives for a decade. But if, if you can get multiple first round picks and young players and assets to build your team moving forward and you're in a better place three years from now, and by the way, those guys are having success on other teams, you can be happy for them on another team as well. That is the correct decision. And that brings us back to this concept of loyalty, because yes, both Beal and Lillard have been loyal to their franchises. They've been the two stars that have stayed with the team that drafted them. They haven't pushed their way to a specific destination. They haven't left in free agency. Absolutely, they've been loyal to their franchises. They've also been loyal to the massive contracts those franchises are able to give them. And then also they could always request a trade later, but still they've been loyal to their franchises. But wouldn't it be cool if these teams were also loyal to the players and just realized, you know what? We appreciate the fact that you want to stay here, but you have better opportunities elsewhere. We can improve as a franchise and as a team, you can improve your own career and go win some actual basketball games and we don't have to pay you $140 million to basically pay a million dollars per win each of the last four seasons. So if you're Washington, call up the Pelicans, say, hey, you guys tried the CJ McCollum thing. Do you want a little bit better of an upgrade than that? We have Bradley Beal, give us some first round picks, give us some assets, whatever you wanna try and do. Here's your guy, here's your perimeter score alongside your young players, you can push for a title. Hey Miami, you're kind of aging a little bit. You don't really know what to do with your very weird roster at the time. You've been one of the worst offenses in the league for the last couple of seasons, especially late in games. Here's Bradley Beal, here's a guy that can score for you. Give us Tyler Hero, give us some picks, give us some assets. You're right near championship contention as well. And if you're Portland, and call the Lakers, try and get some future draft compensation from them. Try and get some interesting young players from their roster. Call the Clippers, call any number of teams around the league that are championship contenders that might have a couple of assets and would be willing to pay Damian Lillard all the way through the 26-7 season. There are options for you that will improve your team. Now, if you're Washington specifically, you have to trade Beal exactly to where he wants to go because you gave him a no trade clause for whatever reason, but that's a conversation for a different day. And in this era of the NBA, where everybody seems to be changing teams all the time, yes, it's refreshing to have players like this that actually want to stay, that actually want to build a team that a franchise can count on and can build their roster around having these guys on their roster. But you know what else? It's kind of hard to build a championship level group when you're paying 45 to $60 million a year to one player, a player that's not fantastic defensively, a player that's not a two-way player that, yes, in Lillard's case, is an all-NBA caliber guard, and in Beal's case, is an all-star level guard. That's really nice to have. But at certain points, it also really limits your flexibility and your ability to build the team itself unless you go and tank for a season, unless you get really lucky in the draft or in the lottery. And at a certain point, you reach where Portland and Washington are right now and have been for years, and that is the middle of the NBA. And it serves nobody any good for these players to continue to be loyal to teams that have no ability to get out of the middle without trading these players specifically. I respect their loyalty and I appreciate it, but it's time for the teams to be loyal now to the players and to their careers and to what they could accomplish and pull the trigger, not only on something that will help the player, but they'll help the team way more than anything else ever could. This is the time, this is the moment, this off season, we need to have a, a resolution to this. Bradley Beal, Damian Lillard, find them new teams.